I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, discussions and um, I'm also going to start out with just showing you uh, my course. Let me get on the right screen here. Um, so one of the things that I learned early on, I mean, this was in the first online training I ever took, was you have to be uh, consistent and you cannot state, um, I'm sharing my screen now, so there we go. You cannot state uh, the same thing enough. So what I'm about to show you is, this is a development shell for a logic class that I teach. And that's actually an announcement. I wanna go back, start up with, like this is my homepage. And so it's all, uh, this is a four week class. And so it's the, all the announcements show up on my homepage, um, but this is you know what it looks like. The syllabus I posted here, and I also post it um, in, uh, on the link on the left. And um, so, I mean, I, you know, multiple uh, places, you know, and I will literally copy and paste things and say it over and over and over. You can't say it enough. That was a very valuable uh, piece of advice that was given to me. And I, I really believe like it's one of the things that makes my courses successful is that I'm consistent. I say the same thing, you know, that I want them to do over and over and over. You just, and even, and I'll tell you the truth, even when you do that, you still have folks who sometimes say, hey, I missed the announcement, you know, where you said, even though you said it like six times in the class, it's okay. It's just, it happens. It's live. But anyway, so um, I don't actually use modules, but I do it sort of like modules. I do it week by week. So I chunk my course up into weeks. Those are like modules. Um, and uh, I wanted to show you, since I'm here to talk to you about discussions, I wanted to show you um, well, before I got into that, one more thing. So I actually use my announcements as like uh, teaching tools as well. So I'm, I don't just say, you know, this is week one, this is week two, blah, blah, blah. I talk about things in the announcements that I wanted to pay attention to. So um, I do that. But also discussions, I've learned that I can really use those not only to get the students to talk to each other, but to like really use them as teaching tools. So this is just an example of a discussion uh, forum that I have in my logic class um, where we're talking about logical fallacies and I'm asking, asking them like, what's your most common fallacy? Give some examples. And then the previous week, or I think maybe it's the following week, I talk about like my own fallacies, like what I do. So, um, and what this is something, this is the thing I want, I want to draw your attention to at the bottom here. So one of the requirements for every discussion forum that I have in my classes is that the students have to post um, the, uh, like by a certain day in the course and they have to post on three days. Okay, so that is a requirement in every discussion forum that I have. Now, um, you know, you can do four days, you can do, um, you know, you can pick the day you need them to uh, post by, but every discussion forum has that requirement. So typically, since this was um, the intercession, the development shelf for my intercession class this year, um, the, the initial day was Saturday. Um, but typically it's Wednesday. So I typically parse out weeks into um, Monday through Sunday. They have to have an initial post by Wednesday and they have to post uh, three days in the discussion forum. And then I give them a word count. And now I'm going to be honest with you. Do I keep them? You might be wondering, does she, is she really, you know, does she really hold them to that? Well, yes and no. In the beginning, I'm, you know, i I, I, during the first week, I let, you know, I give everybody a pass. And so when I go into speed grader and I'm writing out the comments, uh, one of the things is always make sure to post on three separate days because I might count off next week, you know, and I do that. Um, and, you know, um, it, I find this to be really helpful because the students like really do engage with the discussions. I mean, even on like, this is, you know, what's your most common fallacy? Like the students talk to each other and they help each other out and they talk about, you know, current events. And so that, this is my kind of boring 
discussion prompt, but this is an interesting discussion prompt. It's about race. And this is from a different class. This is from my um, social philosophy class. And I, I love this class because I, we, every semester, we talk about very controversial things and not everybody agrees on this stuff. But we do it well, and I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm always like a little bit nervous sometimes. I mean, well, I'm always a little bit nervous, but every semester the students do a great job like addressing the, these really difficult issues. And so this is like one about race. And what I do, so this is the prompt, and there's a lot to it. I make them read through it. So then I, I post like links to things that they can read about, you know, issues like, so the question here is, do uh, races exist? And that links to like a philosophy page. That's the first link. The second one links to an article in Scientific American. The third one links to a news story about what they're doing in Brazil and so on. And you can do that. You know, you can really like, um, you know, embed a bunch of stuff in these discussion prompts. You can do it. I've done it in announcements too. Um, but discussion prompts don't have to be boring. They can be really, you know, robust and interactive. And I, this is an example of just one from that particular class where, like, you know, this is a difficult question, but, you know, students get into it. They like it. It means something to them. And, um, you know, you can, like, I posted extra stuff. Oh, and that's another thing I wanted to say. So, you know, and doing posting this extra stuff for them to read this additional material helps them with the material that you've already assigned um but it also um like will sometimes like if they haven't bought the book yet like it'll kind of i sometimes i work make discussion posts such that or uh the prompts such that like during the first couple of weeks for example um, like, I'll make it such that, like, okay, if you don't have the book yet, you're not going to tank, you know, the discussion forum. You know, you could, you know, you could kind of fudge it. I know, I know that that happens, you know, but, you know, like, I do that on purpose to kind of, like, give them a little bit to work with while they're kind of getting settled in. So, um, anyway, um, and that's just about all I've got. Um, I haven't been paying attention to chat, so if you've got a question for me, I'm happy to try to answer it. I have a question here that comes up that I get asked a lot, and that is, um, do you change the, so for your Wednesday, do you set your initial due date as that Wednesday that you're wanting them to post by initially, and then you change yeah. the due date? Do I, do I change it every week? No, I mean, I keep it every, it's every Wednesday. So like they have to post, the initial post is, is always Wednesday. So then there are two posts that it'll look like they come in late, but you'll know that they were part of that week's posts. What do you mean? How will it look like they came in late? Because it's your, your due date is Wednesday or whatever. And so if they come in, they come in on to do their second post on Thursday or Friday, they mm -hmm. will have miss that deadline right well no if they do the first post like on tuesday or wednesday they're they they meet the deadline um so that's all i count and then if they do a second post on thursday you know that or a second post on you know saturday and sunday and oh and by the way i also i give them multiple like I, this is another a situation where I give them like multiple examples. So I've created like generic scenarios like Joe posts his initial response on uh, Tuesday and then response to Sarah on, you know what I mean? And I do that and I give them and I, that's posted like in an announcement and in the syllabus. And um, I'm also a big believer in like syllabus quizzes. So anything that you really want them to pay attention to, I, put, I give them a syllabus quiz in the first week, and that's a small part of their grade. Discussions, by the way, are small, a small part of their grade in my um, classes, too. Um, but, you know, again, I get them to do it, even though it's a small part of their grade, because, you know, like, I try to make it like this is an interesting thing. You know, at each, no matter what I'm teaching, I'm trying to get them, you know, like, and I figure, you know, whatever it is that you're teaching, you know, like, the think about the coolest thing that you know about your discipline or whatever it is you're teaching that week or that module and you know like what is you know what would engage you know like so yeah anyway 
Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, can, do you go in manually to check all their submissions, or to what extent can you just set it up in Canvas to record that they've done it? Well, when you go into SpeedGrader, mm -hmm. um, so when you, so like if you go into, this is a, um, so let me think about if I can show you, I can't, let me see if I can show you this with um, the shell class, because these were actual, I don't, I, I can't show you the grades. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Go into SpeedGrader. Yeah, this is not, okay. That's not going to work. Okay. Um, bummer. All right. Well, okay. um, when when you go into SpeedGrader, you'll see the dates where they posted. Oh, I see. You have them as assignments, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But will it automatically populate? Is there a way they can, if they post something on the assignment, it'll populate a a point, say? Or do you have to go on? You have to manually grade it. Yeah, okay. you have to auto grade Sorry. it. Oh, and that's another. Oh, I'm sorry, Leslie. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, I'm just thinking with my my big double section, it would be could be a lot of work, but it thanks. Could, yeah, I mean, you know, but you can. I don't know if you picked up on this, but um, a lot of people do this, and I do this too. There are certain things that, like you know, that statement about you know, make sure to post in the forum three separate days of each week. That's a cut and paste thing. So you want to start a Word document or a Google document or however you store right. that material, and you know, you'll you'll keep, you know, you'll use the same thing over and over and that's totally fine you know so it, it I guess it could be but it doesn't have to be you can yeah. make I you can know. automate it to an extent yeah you'll see, Leslie you'll see like for the one student across that board you'll see those all on one screen so that's what oh what Mary okay. can't show you because she can't show you a real student's course but like yeah. you would see that for you know Leslie Seeger posted this 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 and this on the meet and greet for example and right so you kind of it 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 sounds clunkier than it actually is to like see every student every yeah. post from a singular student but it's yeah. actually pretty nice the way it's all on one screen then you you assign them one grade for that discussion yeah okay. yeah and, and I, I agree with a syllabus quiz I've had really good luck when I do it yeah yeah um and then uh. One more thing uh, I wanted to mention just in general um, was, okay, so we're, you know, our courses are set to Pacific time. So what if somebody's in another time zone, you know, like, and, and this doesn't happen very often, but, you know, from like six hours, six or eight hours, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. The point, I really don't care if they post on Wednesday. What I care about is that they're engaging with each other. Yeah. They don't, you know, like, they don't know what I really, really care about. So that they're engaged. But what I care about is that they're engaging with each other. So, you know, like if they post on Thursday, Saturday, and you know Sunday, whatever. You know, they did it. <laughs> they did it, and they talked to other people, and they, you know, right. So, yeah. You're just preventing the situation where everybody's posting a Sunday night at 10 p.m. Yeah. and there's absolutely no interaction, and it's all and, just all right. one big, yeah. Right. No, it, and it that, and you're you're designing. That's the way to design interaction, like into the design of your course. Yeah, and yeah. And, and and yeah, and people, you know, don't agree with each other. You know, like it, it you know, it, you and you doing it this way, you avoid a lot of what Katie just said. Everybody <laughs> does it on Sunday night, you know, and then nobody cares, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all great. Right. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome.